Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for attending the presentation. And uh, the presentation today is uh, on sweet cherry response to irrigation methods and surface applied organic amendments in Okanagan Valley, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, my uh, co-authors uh, are Tom Forge, uh, Dennis Nelson, uh, Jerry Nelson from uh, Summerland Research and Development Center, which is one of the Agriculture Agri-Food Canada research stations, and uh, Esmail Yasori, which is uh, our graduate student from University of British Columbia. So we see an increase in interest uh, in using organic mulch and amendments uh, in different orchards, particularly in the cherry orchards. Um, and one of the reasons for this uh, increase in the interest is a uh, more sustainable production system and, uh, and the need for uh, and the need for an alternative fertilization and uh, pest and weed control methods. Um, also, we see more strict regulations on use of the glyphosate in the orchard and vineyards, and that uh, and that also uh, increased the, the 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 interest in use of the organic mulch instead of uh, spraying. Um, availability of the um, organic waste and amendment in this region is also one of the reasons uh, that the growers have uh, have more interest in use of them. Uh, and uh, finally, the climate change. We see um, a very clear trend of the climate change, more warmer climates, uh, more extreme events in the region that uh, hugely impacted the yield and especially the sustainability of the yield. And um, Use of amendments uh, is is known to be one of the uh, one of the factors that can balance this uh, or mitigate the climate change uh, or response of the plant to the climate change. Uh, so we see more yield and yield stability uh, and agricultural resilience when we using these organic amendments. And in this study, also other studies, we 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 show that. So long-term interaction of the amendments and irrigation on yield and yield quality, soil and tree nitrogen status uh, are uh, the interest of the cherry growers. And uh, the cherry growers, first, they, they would like to use the organic amendment. And second, they, they, uh, the irrigation system is mainly micro sprinklers. And, and we see the interest in switching to the drip irrigation uh, because uh, more water use efficiency and nutrient use efficiency in the drip irrigation. So we wanted to show them that what, what is the impact uh, if you're using organic amendment and also the uh, drip irrigation system. So this project, uh, uh, the object, the main objective was to evaluate the effect of uh, fumigation, uh, soil amendment and uh, irrigation on uh, soil borne pathogens. So we wanted to see uh, one of the methods, one alternative methods for the uh, uh, soil borne pathogen control, which caused the replant disease complex is the amendment, organic amendment, which is one part of this research, which uh, I'm not talking about this part, but me, the focus of this presentation is more effect on the yield, uh, fruit quality and growth, and also nitrogen, both in soil and in the plant. Um, the orchard location located our uh, our research station, Summerland Research and Development Station in Okanagan Valley, British Columbia, Canada. Um, the climate in this region is usually uh, cool winters, average minus uh, 1.4 degree, and warm summers, hot and dry summers, and low annual precipitation. So this is a semi-arid region, 326 millimeter per year average precipitation. Variety was a skina on Gisla 6 rootstock, and the soil is a light texture soil, sandy loam. And we had uh, five different treatments untreated soil, which was the control, uh, fumigation at planting, uh, pre plant uh, application of the compost, uh, surface applied application of the bark mulch, and combined application of the compost and mulch. And 
each of these amendments reapplied every other year. Uh, the mulch applied on the surface all the time. We added the mulch on the surface, about uh, three inches of mulch on the surface of the soil. And the compost uh, in the first year is incorporated in the top uh, 10 centimeter of the soil. And then from, uh, for the second and third application, we surface apply. So we remove the mulch to the side. If, if it was a combination of the compost and mulch, apply the compost and then uh, put, back the, uh, put back the mulch. If it wasn't combination treatment, we just applied it to the surface of the soil. <clears throat> Irrigation treatments include uh, micro sprinkler and drip irrigation. And uh, I mentioned that both uh, compost and mulch are applied uh, um, every other year, so 2014, 2016, and 2019. All treatments were fumigated, uh, sorry, fertigated with the 15 grams of the phosphorus per tree at Bloom and uh, six weeks of uh, 30 gram nitrogen per tree for total of 30 gram nitrogen per, per season. Uh, the diameter of the plant were measured and TCSA calculated every fall. Leaf sample collected at harvest, analyzed for nitrogen, soil samples collected uh, spring, uh, summer, and uh, late summer of every year. Uh, you see the pictures, control left, uh, compost uh, top right, how different they are, the color you, you would be able to say. You see that, um, uh, again, mulch in the left side down here, and the mulch and compost, the combination treatment. Uh, the soil characteristics, I mentioned that is a sandy loam soil, uh, pH is close to neutral, uh, lower uh, CC, and also nutrients following the same order. Uh, amendments, uh, so we had mulch and we had compost. And as we expected, mulch is a little bit more acidic because it's a year, uh, is a, a shredded bark and uh, wood chips of the um, coniferous uh, trees. And uh, you see quite a bit of uh, organic uh, carbon and total nitrogen in the mulch. Total nitrogen is, is lower, of course, we expected. So this is a carbon-rich amendment versus the compost that is also nitrogen-rich. And uh, the, uh, uh, the carbon is, is lower than the mulch. The pH is, is much higher. And the compost was a one year old and the feedstock was 15% grape uh, pumice, 20% straw, 25% shredded mark bark and wood chips, and 40% uh, cumin. Uh, so this is, this is what I'm talking about, the climate change. You see quite a bit of variability in the, um, in the temperature and in the pre precipitation from year to year. And, uh, and I'm going to show you that this, this is from 2014 to 2019 um, at the station. And uh, you see some years are warmer, some years are cooler. Some years are uh, very dry, some years are very wet. And that can has a huge impact on the interaction of the yield or yield quality with the irrigation system. So if you wanna see two opposite years are 2017 and 2019. In 2017, it was like cool and wet. In 2019, it was warm and dry. Okay, looking at the yield, we'll see that uh, we'll see uh, there's uh, uh, so yield on ton per hectare unit uh, at the left of the graph and the growing season from 2016 to 2020. Uh, crop planted in 2014, but by the time we had the first harvest, it was 2016. And then you see the first year, we see lower yield in the amendment. Second years, they become comparable with the control and with the basimate, which is, is a lighter color. Um, in the third year, we see that uh, our yield in the amendment plots surpasses the uh, control and basimate. In 2019, we had a 
uh, cold damage, also heavy pruning, but still you see comparable or higher yield in the amendments. And 2020, there was a trend in the higher, towards the higher yield, but not significant. So we thought that maybe suppression of the soil pathogen, maybe controlling uh, or buffering the moisture and uh, enhancing the root zone microbial diversity and nutrient cycling as uh, was resulted in this positive effect on the yield. Um, yield, uh, uh, when we looking at the yield stability in the sweet cherries, we look at the standard deviation. Also, we look at the coefficients of the variance or CV. And uh, in both gra graphs, you see that uh, the mulch and compost or mulch, which is the brown color, light brown and dark color, they're lower compared to the, on average is lower compared to the other treatment. It shows that we had less variability in the yield. Uh, looking at the soil moisture, we followed and uh, you compare the red line, which is the basamid or control, very similar, the same, versus the mulch that was the uh, brown color. And we see that always the basamid and control is lower or equal and mulch is higher or equal. So mulch definitely impacted the moisture content. Uh, looking at the cumulative yield, we see that uh, we see a trend towards, so we added all these from 2016 to 2020 yield. Uh, we, because of the variability, high variability in this, uh, this kind of setting, the perennial horticultural crops, we, it's hard to see a significant effect, but definitely you see the trend here towards higher cumulative yield. Uh, in terms of the trunk diameter, you see again, uh, started lower, but then catch up. And uh, in 2019, you see it's still higher TCSA, but not significant. Uh, total uh, split, so we can looking at the yield quality uh, or fruit quality parameters. Uh, so up and down, uh, some years you see higher in the amendment, some years uh, slightly lower. So no, no, no uh, particular trend we saw that. In the terms of the berry size, uh, the berry size was uh, either higher or equal, no huge effect. In terms of the yield, when you're looking at the irrigation system, so you see that uh, solid uh, blue is the macro sprinklers and the drip irrigation is this uh, pattern. And interesting thing is that if the year is wet and cool, then the drip irrigation did better, higher yield. But if the year was warm and dry, then the micro sprinklers. So the thought is that the micro sprinklers create a microclimate, more humid microclimate for the, uh, for the cherries that they like it. And TCSA, uh, so similar thing, you see um, that uh, main, mainly the uh, drip irrigation resulted in the higher but then in the last uh, two or three years, we didn't see any significant differences uh, with the drip irrigation. Leaf, again, up and down, they all above 2%, which is the optimum level uh, for the nitrogen in the cherry leaves. And we, we, we collected the leaves at harvest. Um, I'm just going quickly, leaf nitrogen. Uh, again, you see that the years that we had a cool and wet year, we had uh, uh, cool and wet, we had the drip irrigation did better and the years that were dry, the micro sprinklers that did better. In terms of the soil mineral nitrogen, uh, as you see in the graph, the micro sprinklers on the left, drip irrigation in the right, drip irrigation, you see high, higher nitrogen, so less losses, particularly uh, uh, less leaching in, in this system uh, compared to the micro sprinklers. Also, we see that the uh, because the fertilizer applied from the surface, drip irrigation had less contact of the fertilizer and, and less immobilization. And 
also pay attention to the compost and mulch and mulch in both drip and micro sprinklers, and they have the lowest amount of nitrogen, which is very important in the environmental sustainability of the system. As, as a result, like the, as a con conclusion, we, we can say that in cherry orchard with light soil texture, low organic matter, very recommended supplemental fertilizer in the applied, climate factor and water management are the main drivers of the yield tree uh, growth and nitrogen nutrition. So very important climate factors and water management. And with that, I would like to thank you, all the people, all our technicians, the, uh, the field services, and all the students that helped in uh, conducting this uh, study. Thank you very much.